Hey, everyone. got to do it because I'm just... It is Wednesday, June 12, 2019. I'm going to call to order the meeting of the school committee. The June 12, 2019 school committee meeting will be televised and recorded. Under the open meeting law, the public is permitted to make an audio or video recording of an open session at a public meeting. At this time, I would ask if anyone is recording tonight's meeting to please identify him or herself. Okay. Seeing none. Um, before we do the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I'd like to take a brief moment of silence for Ryan Driscoll, an honor student and a multi-sport athlete at Central Catholic High School who passed away tragically this past weekend. Ryan attended the Tewksbury Public Schools through the eighth grade. He will be missed by all. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Malone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Tonight is rather bittersweet. Uh, we are here to honor many of our staff members who will be retiring at the end of this year. Despite the fact that this looks like a middle school convention in here, we're <coughs> actually part of it is we want to recognize some of our retirees. Um, these individuals are really the backbones of our school system. They bring us experience, insight, um, particularly with a lot of the newer uh, advances we see in education, it's great to reflect on back with some veteran teachers about kind of how certain things have evolved and to remind us all that the world changes around us but caring for students doesn't. So we're very much appreciative of all their work. I'm going to call them up by name and they all know whenever Ms. Regan's in the room they need to follow Ms. Regan's instruction so she will place them in addition I'd like the uh, the building principals to uh, come up with the retirees as well and also we'll be honoring our retirees with a uh, gift as we always do in uh, remembrance of their service to Tewksbury Public Schools but most of all their long-term service to the students at Tewksbury which is very much appreciative so with that from the Doing Elementary School in the Heathbrook School, Ms. Deb Bueller. From the Doing Elementary School, Ms. Robin Hackala. From the Doing Elementary School, Ms. Anna Gaudette from Food Services. <laughs> from the Doing Elementary School, kindergarten name Eileen Weiss. <laughs> and from every school in Tewksbury, some that are no longer in existence, but most recently from Tewksbury Memorial High School, school nurse Elaine Walsh. <laughs> I'd also uh, like to uh, read off uh, several teachers who could not uh, join us here tonight, but thank them for their service as well. From the Wynn Middle School, uh, instructional aide Lori Angelo. From the Heathbrook School, uh, classroom aide Karen Gelati. From the superintendent's office, an assistant superintendent, uh, admin assistant Janice Larock. From the Wynn Middle School, Ms. Elaine Sparrows. Let's thank them also for their service.
Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. I wish you here every meeting. Congratulations. Thank you. Now I know. Good luck, congratulations. And uh, also, in addition, we have uh, Mr. Josh Billiter, president of the TTA, and other members of the TTA to also have a presentation. Thank you for inviting us. Um, I just want to <laughs> we do, and we can get a picture, Jason, a still of them. If you guys would all like to look at the camera, we'll get a picture that we can post on the website for you. <laughs> Great, thank you. And thank you on behalf of the school committee. Your know, many years of service uh, is thankful for all the students and for the rest of the staff uh, from Tewksbury. And we hope you have a tremendous and long retirement. Thank you again from the school committee. Before I proceed, I just want to uh, just give a statement of fact tonight. I know everybody's interested in, the, in what's going to happen at about 8.18 this evening. Uh -huh. is an, a good omen for tonight is on 2011, when they won the Cup in Vancouver, we had a school committee meeting that night. So that is a good omen for tonight. So, that, being said, that being said, I'm going to do a recognition now, a well-deserved recognition for Molly Ginsburg and the friends of the Tewksbury Elementary School Building Project. Molly, everyone. Before I read the official proclamation, I can't even begin to thank the school from all the residents of the town. The work that they did, the many hours, the many meetings, the many responses on Facebook, um, to what they've done for this project. Without this group, I'm not convinced that we would have had the success we had at the ballot box and at the town meeting. This group deserves a great grat of gratitude from everybody in this town and for all our students in the future. I just wanted to say that. Whereas, Molly Ginsburg initiated the development of the Friends of the Elementary School Building Project to support the Elementary School Building Committee. And whereas, she and her group attended numerous elementary school building committee meetings to stay updated on the project and organized an army of volunteers to support the new elementary school. And whereas, through their fundraising efforts and donations, Molly and her friends developed online communication resources and promoted materials to promote the new elementary school building project. Whereas, Molly hosted several informational meetings to provide information to the voters and supporters of the project and to keep the Tewksbury community informed. Whereas Molly Ginsburg has brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to herself, to her family, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now therefore, let it be resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the outstanding achievement of Molly Ginsburg and all the friends of the elementary school buildings. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Long? Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could have uh, Mr. Long and Mr. Ware to please come up. We have several recognitions from the Wynn Middle School, which is a true testament to the students of the Wynn Middle School. We have recognitions ranging from academic to service to theater. This really shows a true, uh, well-rounded approach to education, celebrates all the great things all of our students do in the district, but here specifically to the Wynn Middle School. And we, we, this is a great testament to success. And I'm going to hand it off to Mr. Weir. We have four sections of students that we're going to recognize this evening. So <coughs> with that, Mr. Weir, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks. So first off, we have uh, the cast and crew of the Drama Fest winners of the gold medal. The cast and crew of an absolutely true story as told by a bunch of lying liars. Uh, and as, we, as I call your name, if you can just lie, we're going to make two lines here. We have Brady <coughs> Aylward, <coughs> Cade Barron, Brooke Bunyan, Sean Butler, Emily Carrier, Darren Castiglione, Gianna Ciampa, Justin DeRigo, Aslan Davis, Jack Dakota, Sarah Downing, Daniel Franklin, Lindsay Frontaine, Marisa Gomes, Ethan Hines, Lindsay Holbrook, Jared Kruger, Victoria Lavarnia, Maximus Matuccio, Natalie Matuccio, Ryan Murphy, Alexander Nagibi, Anthony Nagibi, Kylie Nagel, Kim San Nguyen, Sheila Parma, Emma Pelland, Katrina Raymond, Anthony Russo, Matthew Stadman, Zachary Sullivan, Grace Wade, Emily Zadig, and advisors John DePrima and Amanda Barabee. could all look that way, um, we'll get a still picture of you that we can post on the WIN website. Great. Thank you. Your next group. All right, next group. So you guys may file. And our next group is our math team. <coughs> math team, next, Mr. Long. Yes. <coughs> okay, good. You're right. Allergies killing me. Pong.
they're all done. Yeah. Next curve. Our next group. Our next group is the math team uh, who competed and came in second in the division of the Intermediate Math League and for the first year competed in the Massachusetts competition and did an outstanding performance there. And you'll hear more about that in the proclamation. Our members are John Baker, Kean Dawson, Jaden Donaher, Edward Doyle, Anna Ruth Harlaka, Peter and Pink, Hannah Quartler, Renuka Latte, Dakota Malizia, Jessica Markey, Darya Mirabani, Poria Mirabani, Kim San Wen, Harshit Paul, Christian Kiroga, Katrina Shilly, Mathun Thayaparan, George Zakular, Randy Zakular, advisors Ms. Stan Shao and Ms. Amanda Webb. So let's hear it for the math. and Ms. Amanda Webb, each of the above was a contributing member of the math team. And whereas the team has an outstanding performance during their first time participating in the Massachusetts competition with John Baker winning first place in the individual round, and whereas the team placed second in the quadrant division of the Intermediate Math League, and whereas the members of the math team distinguished themselves as, an excellent stu as excellent students and members of the student body who uphold the ideals and values of the John W. Wynn Middle School, and whereas the members of the math team have brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to themselves, to their parents and families, to the school, and to the town of Tewksbury. Now therefore be it resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the outstanding achievement of the John W. Wynn Middle School math team. team next, Mr. Long? <laughs> <laughs> we started big and went small, so <laughs> getting small. Our next group, the Knowledge Bowl team, came in second in the Greater Lowell uh, Regional Knowledge Bowl contest, and the following students participated in that event. Johnny Baker, Albie Bosworth, Morgan Crowley, Jaden Donaher, Mason Haynes, Andy Harlaka, Peter M. Pink, Jasmine Johansson, Sarah Johansson, Owen Kinnan, Kim San Wen, Harshit Paul, David Penny, and Olivia Ward, and they were under the guidance of Mr. Tim Timothy Olefsky. team are in second place in the Greater Lowell Regional Knowledge Bowl, and whereas the members of the Knowledge Bowl team distinguished themselves as excellent students and members of the student <coughs> body have upheld the ideals and values of the John W. Wynn Middle School, and whereas the members of the Knowledge Bowl team have brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor for themselves, their parents, their families, to the school and to the town of Tewksbury, now therefore be it resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the outstanding achievement of the John W. Wynn Middle School Knowledge Bowl team. Exactly. 
Our last group is the group of students who through an essay contest uh, where they wrote about why it's important to honor those who, who gave their lives for this country uh, were involved in the wreath laying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery during our trip to Washington, D.C. And those students, when we call your name, you can just come up the line up here. Emily Carrier, William Eskenas, Megan Haley, and Will Scotland. On behalf of the school committee, it's my honor to present this resolution of recognition in light of just passing Memorial Day and the 4th of July ahead of us. Um, it's a great honor for myself on behalf of my school committee and the district to present this. So, whereas Emily, William, Megan, and Will were selected to represent Tewksbury at the replaying ceremony at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C., and whereas their entries into the 8th grade essay contest qualified them for this honor, and whereas their essays impress the judges and presented why it is important for us to honor those who have served and given their lives to this nation. And whereas these students distinguish themselves as excellent students and members of the student body who uphold the ideals of the John Wayne Middle School, and whereas Emily, William, Megan, and Will have brought great pride, recognition, enthusiasm, and honor to themselves, to their parents, to their families, to the school, to the school board, and the town of Tewksbury. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Tewksbury School Committee applauds, honors, and recognizes the outstanding achievement of the John Wynn Middle School students, Emily, William, Megan, and Will. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, next up on the agenda is a student representative report. Mr. Stabman? Uh, not too much to report today, but still some important information. Um, all clubs have had their final meetings between last week and this week. Um, each club has made goals for the upcoming year. Um, for example, the, uh, the student council chose new leaders for the upcoming year and are coming up with fundraising ideas for MASC next year. Um, the class of 2021 ran a successful fun run last weekend, and I'd just like to wish everybody uh, good luck during uh, their finals week, and thanks for a great year, and I'll see you all in the fall. Thank you. Great job. Well done report. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to request the committee entertain uh, taking two items out of order. A uh, donation from Exxon Mobil Educational Alliance Program and uh, the new business, the uh, uh, TAG MOA in regards to the administrators union within the uh, district. Do we have a motion to take those two items out of order? I'd like to make that motion to take the uh, mobile donation and also the TAG out of order, please. Second. I have a motion on the floor and second to take those two items out of order. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Mr. Malone. Mr. Chairman, uh, once again, uh, we're never surprised by the amount of support we get from this community in regards to education. And a, a great example of this is uh, community member, uh, Mr. John Sargent, manager of the Tewksbury Mobile on Andover Street. And if I could have Mr. Sargent come up with uh, our, our doing uh, principal, Ms. Garish. And um, not only was this a donation, uh, but this was also a surprise donation where Mr. Sargent had uh, worked with ExxonMobil Corporation, uh, his parent company, and uh, applied for a uh, grant award on behalf of the doing school and surprised Ms. Garish with that. And it's that type of generosity and that type of work from our community members that, that makes us feel so great about this community. <coughs> and Ms. Garish, if you can explain maybe a little bit more. 
Certainly, I got a, I got a phone call and a uh, gentleman introduced himself as Mr. John Sargent from down the street and he said, I have some money for you. He says, we, <laughs> always a good phone call. <laughs> So it, it's so he came and he said one of the things that and and uh, and correct me if I if I mess up mm -hmm. a little bit, but the um, the Mobile Exxon Foundation has opportunities for individual um, for managers of individual stations and companies to apply on behalf of schools um, for all over the country and not every not every application is accepted not everyone that's accepted ha is granted. Um, the doing, Mr. Sargent's application on behalf of the doing to, um, to earn us $500 toward math and science, the purchase of math and science supplies, um, was one of 79 in the, in the northeast part of the United States. And so we're incredibly grateful that, um, to recognize that we need to, that the foundation of, of learning begins with, with our youngest ones and that we're, we're good neighbors. And, and now we're even better neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Next year's <Because>. company. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he was tremendous, and he he just came he, he came to the school and he said, we, we believe we believe in what what you do here in the public schools, and we want to find a way to support that. And we're just so incredibly grateful for your help and um, and for your initiative. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very Thank you. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very Hopefully much. We can do it for a few oh, years. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, if we could have uh, from the TAG unit, Dr. Eileen Osborne and Mr. Andy Long, please come on up. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, so proud of our administrators' union, and uh, we worked very hard to negotiate a new uh, three-year contract on behalf of the administrators in the district. And once again, they have just done an outstanding job uh, supporting our students, working well with central office and the building principals, and really being that connection to the classroom teacher. And it's just an outstanding group of educators committed to the students at Tuxbury. And we're ecstatic that we have a new three-year contract that we'll be working with them. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the committee, uh, I, I just want to echo the words that the superintendent had. Mm -hmm. Our administrators do a, <clears throat> a tremendous job, especially in the terms of student achievement. Um, and sometimes I think we underappreciate the great work that they do. But uh, I'm glad that this has come to a pass and we're looking forward for the next three years and more years to follow that. Uh, great job by everybody in the negotiating team from the TAG unit and from our administrators as well. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Chair, I believe the committee would need to take a vote mm -hmm. to uh, approve that. Do I have I'd like a to make a motion to approve the tag agreement? I'm sorry, I don't have the duration in front of me. The actual one. 2018 through 2021. Thank you. From July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2020. 21, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion on the floor and a second <clears throat> to to vote it to agreement with the TAG union from two, June of 2018, July 1st wow. of 2018 to June of 2021. This requires a roll call vote. Mr. Stammen? Yes. Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Cullis? Aye. Mr. Demos? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Mr. Chair, um, I'm not sure who from the committee would like to have signed that. Great, fantastic. Okay. That's it. That's it. Great. Thank you. Congratulations to our administrators union. Great job. Mr. Chair, we have a uh, couple of presentations in regards to handbooks at this time. Um, the principals are going to do this individually or together? 
Chairman, it sounds like they want to come up together. So if we could have the principals come up from the John F. Ryan Elementary School, from the Wynn Middle School, and from Tewksbury High School to uh, give a short presentation on each grade levels or school levels uh, handbook and updates to that, uh, and then to entertain a uh, committee vote at that time for approval. Mm -hmm. Sure. I just want to face towards the camera, if you would, please. Mr. Chairman, in lieu of a full presentation, I know that Ryan really hasn't changed. Um, I would like to suggest that maybe the uh, presenters just present the changes, and if anyone has any questions, we can maybe comment or have questions on the, uh, on the changes, as opposed to having a full presentation of all these uh, handbooks. Is, uh, any, do I have a second for Mr. Sullivan's uh, motion? Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor and second to have our presenters just present if there are changes, and at the end we'll ask any questions uh, at all. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Go at it. Well, I'll start short and sweet at the Ryan School. We have very few changes. Thank you for noticing. Uh, we have a, an addition of a civil rights notification. It also includes a link to a form that citizens could fill out if they were interested in auditing the curriculum in terms of civil rights. We also added something in terms of food services. We never want to surprise families about the process and what that's like, so we've added some wording around that, and it's consistent, I think, across all three handbooks. At the Ryan School, we also added uh, iPhones and smartwatches <coughs> to our devices, uh, as that is something that we consistently try to manage with our age group. Um, and lastly, things that were just you know typical of an update, including new dates, uh, new calendar, new dismissal time. So the word all, all students. The word all. All applies to all students. All. Just in case people <clears throat> thought it wasn't their child, they yeah, just wanted know. to make sure they knew it was all students. I appreciated the specificity in here and the color coding is that we could just easily see that these were the changes. Um, I do appreciate the, cl the clear language with the smart watches because it sometimes comes to be a vague issue of it's not my phone, but essentially it is the same device on your, on your wrist. So I do appreciate that language in here as well. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, similar to the Ryan, we added uh, different language to make the, some of the statements more inclusive, using the word all, including uh, different categories and things that may have been uh, overlooked. We uh, added the idea of restorative justice activities to our disciplinary actions, and that really stems from uh, some work that Principal Vogel started here at the high school, and then Mr. Long has done extensive training in as well uh, to bring a new approach to um, dealing with disciplinary issues. So we added that as a potential uh, one of the list of things that could happen based on disciplinary action. And uh, we added the food services item, similar to the Ryan, mm -hmm. and we took out a mistake about the buses and no late buses, which we did have late buses this year, and that was in there, we didn't catch it last year. Uh, so that pretty much sums up our changes as well. Thank you. Any questions on the win? I, I, just a comment, I think it's fantastic, the restorative justice, uh, being someone that worked in corrections for 20 years, um, I think it's great that if students uh, realize that, hey, there's an issue, um, if they're able to work that out, I, I think that's something that we should absolutely be promoting in the district, and it's uh, great to see that you're doing it at the win and, and at the high school as well. So thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, at the high school, um, similar to the Ryan win, we added language around um, uh, civil rights notification, as well as we added for, um, particularly for us at the high school, a gender equity statement um, <coughs> around athletics as well as extracurricular. So that's a, uh, a new addition uh, needed to our handbook. Uh, another major change uh, was the addition of language around an advisory block on page 13. So this is something that came um, from um, some of our work of our faculty this year. Um, as well as input from students around uh, having a time during the year, periodically during the year, where students would meet with a, an adult uh, in the building. They would be assigned, we're going to break them up by grade level, but it will not be alphabetical, so the groups will be mixed up. Um, departments have decided they want to, so, so for example, the social studies department, say the world language department, might share the, the entire ninth grade. Two other departments may share the 10th grade. Uh, the plan is to loop with the kids. You stay with the same group for, through four years. 
uh, and with the goal of creating another adult in the building that they have a connection with, so another adult that they can go to, another adult who can um, write a recommendation for them for college or a job. Um, we're starting small, because this is a new thing for us. Uh, we're gonna start with four times a year. Um, it was interesting because uh, that number was sort of all over the place. The students asked for it more frequently. We had some faculty who also asked more, more frequently. We decided as a faculty that we would start smaller and then we know that we will end up wanting to go to more often. Um, we're starting with 30 minutes. We did looked at a lot of research from the timing, what's a good amount of time um, for <coughs> this. To, it may be that that expands to 40 minutes over time um, as we go along. So we're really excited about it. Um, you know, we'll be probably tweaking and making changes as we go along and figuring it out. Um, but we're really excited about it. There were the kids, were really, the, the students are the ones who chose the name. So um, we had a bunch of suggestions and I went to a group of students, met with them and asked them and they chose advisory because they said, we know what it means. We have friends who have advisories. It, we just know it, that's what it is. It is what it is. And so we said, all right, let's do it. It's nice and simple. So that's a, that's a new addition and change for us um, here. The other stuff uh, uh, really is um, just um, you know, tweaks to the grade conversion, graduation requirements, um, overnight trips, um, out of state overnight trips, food services, like the other schools, we added this language around food services. Um, yeah, a lot of housekeeping type housekeeping. items, yep. sort of tightening up some language, mm -hmm. um, uh, and dates and schedules and all of that. Yep. Anybody on the board? I have to say that one of um, my, as I was reading through this, I was, one, I really truly appreciated the school-wide rubric that you have in yeah. there <clears throat> that ties in the collaboration and the problem solving and respect. And I think that sometimes that gets to be that forgotten piece because everyone is so busy trying to get everything done that I love that it's a visual for them. I know that they're the older population in our district, but sometimes we all need a visual to kind of just gauge us into where we are. You know, we use colors in the, the younger ages to say what zone are you in and things. They said, when I looked at this, I thought, it's so appropriate for the high school, and I yeah. thank you for yeah. implementing that. Yeah. I think it's and it was, um, effective tool. We used it tool. for the first time with the senior project, so we designed it so that it would be something that could be used. <coughs> mm -hmm. So it was used this spring um, by the groups to assess student senior projects. I think it's an awesome tool. I think it'll be effective and implement. Thank you very much. Yeah. My only comment uh, is that hopefully we can message out regarding the parking with the senior project that you can't transfer. Yes. You know, I think yes. that's important to give notice yes. to both students and yes. family members, that's yes. all. So yep. other than that, it's we'll great. Thank you. We probably have to you. put a flashing on our website. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think the initiative of the advisory is, is tremendous. And I think as anything happens lately at our high school, we think it's going to start out small, but I think it's going to be overwhelming right away, just like everything else we do. Um, and I think the handbook is, is great. Um, I, I just want to make, while you're here, and uh, is I just want to make a comment on, on, the, on the graduating class of 2019. Um, I attended many of, the, uh, uh, many of the senior events, including the prom. This was the most well-behaved, dedicated, group of, uh, of children that I've seen since I've been on this board. Um, even uh, police officers at the prom from Atkinson commented on uh, their behavior. And I think that's just a tribute to y yourself, the administration, and all the teachers uh, and staff at the high school. It was a Thank tremendous you. job, and graduation went Thank great. I just, I just wanted to say that. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so that being said, I think we should take each handbook on an individual vote. Would somebody like to make a motion to accept the John F. Ryan Elementary School Handbook? Chairman, I'll make a motion to accept the John F. Ryan Elementary School Student Handbook for 2019-2020. Second. That's motion on the floor and seconded to accept the John F. Ryan Elementary School Handbook for 2019-2020. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. I'd also like to make a motion to accept the John Wynn Middle School 2019-2020 student handbook. Second. second. There's a motion on the floor and seconded to accept the John Wynn Middle School 2019-2020 handbook. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Congratulations. Good job. Oh. 
I'll make a motion for the 2019-2020 <laughs> TMHS student handbook. Second. I have a motion on the floor to accept the Tewksbury Memorial High School 2019-2020 handbook. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Thank you again for all your hard work. Thank we appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is citizens <clears throat> forums. Citizens are asked to limit their comments related to items on the agenda for five minutes or ten if a spokesperson is representing a group concern. Is there anybody signed up tonight for citizens forum? Not signed up. I would ask to speak. Okay. Thank you. Just state your name for the record. Maureen Castiglione. I'm speaking on behalf of the Tewksbury Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, unfortunately, the co-chairs could not be here tonight. I happen to be here, so they asked me to address a couple of issues. I see on the agenda that it is listed under committee reports that Mr. Sullivan will be um, giving a report, but I have been asked to address, um, it has been emailed to Mr. Sullivan, to Mr. Malone, to Mr. Pelletier, um, the issues regarding Alphabest and the special education population in Tewksbury, um, the lack of services that are available, um, things that were, weren't found out about until, you know, school's out Friday and people haven't been able to get answers and they've been trying and we as CPAC have been fielding the emails and forward them and trying to get answers and but Keith Sullivan is our rep and he has been excellent in trying to communicate things. But I was specifically asked to bring this up tonight to let the superintendent know, to let the school committee know that we are reaching out, seeking a meeting to try to get some of these questions answered because the parents of the special education population in the town are less than happy with how they've been responded to by Alphabest and by some of the administration. Thank you. We take it under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, seeing none, next is the approval of the minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to move to approve the minutes of our last meeting on Wednesday, May 15th, 2019. Second. I have a motion on the floor and a seconded to, be, to have the approval minutes of May 15th, 2019. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. Submission and payment of bills. So, Mr. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the payroll period ending May 16th, 2019, in the amount of $1,356,814.18. Second. I have a motion on the floor and seconded to approve the payroll ending May 16th, 2019, for the amount of $1,356,814.18. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the payroll period ending May 30th, 2019, in the amount of $1,356,000. $356.86. Second. Second. I have a motion on the floor and seconded to approve the payroll period ending May 30th, 2019 for the amount of $1,356,000, $356.86. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Thank you. I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Malone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I know you uh, hinted on some of the uh, senior week activities. Just congratulations, particularly to the high school for some of their successes this week. Uh, Tuxbury Memorial High School graduation, our 84th commencement ceremony, 235 students graduated, uh, 135 with honors, just an outstanding exhibition of student excellence. Very proud of all our seniors. Also, uh, on um, May 23rd, we had Tuxbury Memorial High School scholarship night. 142 students received awards or scholarships from over 70 donors throughout the community in the area and 369 scholarships totaling over $200,000 were awarded that evening. Just an outstanding testament to the generosity of our community and to the excellence of our students. Um, 
Also a reminder that Alpha Best did have a information night for parents on June 4th. Certainly, as we still get in individual questions, we'll certainly be uh, wanting to work with any individual parents who have some of those pieces. Uh, certainly as a new program, they are starting out, so there will be some growing pains, but uh, certainly we're motivated to help parents where we can. A reminder that uh, CPAC Day in the Hill will take place on June 27th, a meeting with legislators and a <coughs> tour of the uh, State House as well. And a reminder also that summer enrichment through community service uh, continues on with si uh, signups with several activities available for parents, for their students to sign up through community services. And finally, a quick recognition to the Ryan Elementary School, who is uh, recognized by DESE as one of 48 uh, schools or districts that uh, participated and were recognized in the school breakfast challenge. And they are recognized as a champion. And specifically what that means, that they had a particip participation rate in breakfast of 31.37%, which is significant. It's significant for two reasons. One, it does show the need of our students who are coming to school every day that we need to take on other responsibilities to help them uh, receive the education we develop. But two, it's also a tribute to the Ryan School staff in our food services department to provide those opportunities and encourage students to make sure they have a healthy breakfast every day. With that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Regan. Thank you, Superintendent Malone. Um, I have a, a list of names. It's a short list of recognition. The students aren't with us tonight because they've actually graduated. But I thought it was important when you looked into that um, uh, program of graduation to note that we designate a little, little asterisk for our summa cum laude students. These are the top 5% of our graduating class, which in uh, about a 230 student graduating class, the top 5% are 11 students. I'd like to read their name um, and have them recognized uh, formally. Aklilu Aaron, Ryan Bennett, Isabella Bayloum, Jonathan Cabral, Isabella DeRoche, Brooke De Simone, Stephen Duquette, Cameron Grace, Grace Morris, Colton Rush, and Emma White. Students get recognized in the summa cum laude um, uh, designation, valedictorian, salutatorian, and marshal. But these are the top 5% of our entire graduating class. I thought their names should be read publicly. Next in the consent agenda, you will see the various Appendix B letters of recommendation from not only the district, but all of our schools representing the majority of our 2019-20 Appendix B positions. There are still a couple open positions being interviewed for. We will have the remainder of those at the July meeting. The new PLC facilitators have been identified in those letters. I hope you saw those names. These are our new school or teacher leaders in our schools and our newly negotiated teacher contract position. Monday, June 10th was the first of our training with this team. I'm honored to tell you, and in, hidden in the uh, uh, proposal for the new math text is a letter in a contract with John Safier. John Safier kicked off our, I, I can see right now the look on your face, Ms. Demos, the John Safier live in, uh, was right here in this room with our PLC facilitators. He is nationally and internationally renowned for his work with improving student achievement and teacher uh, leadership. He's the founder of Research for Better Teaching and the author of The Skillful Teacher. As I said, this is the first of a four-day series. We will be training our PLC facilitators uh, through coaching high-impact teacher teams and the four steps to improving student achievement. So it was a very exciting day here Monday, and it was a wonderful way to kick off this new role for our teachers. Well, Monday and Tuesday was also the sixth annual Tewksbury Educational Foundation annual spelling bee, co-sponsored with the Tewksbury Cultural Committee. Uh, the winners for the four grade level groups, I'm going to read their names publicly too. In grade four was John Pacheco. In grade seven on Monday night, Paolo Tavares. And then last night, and I, I know that you were there, Mr. Chair, and you saw the fifth grade uh, runoff. 26 rounds to get to the winner, the winning speller, Maya Paquette, and then the sixth grade top speller was Rose So. What a fun night, and these kids really, uh, wow, great spellers. Can I just make a comment, Mrs. Regan? Sure. Um, I attended both of those nights, and the 
the words that those <laughs> those students spell, I would be embarrassed if I was up on the stage and try to spell some of those uh, uh, those words, especially under the lights and the microphone and everything. Uh, I mean, the uh, the kids were just were just great. It was really a well tuned uh, event. I know the kids had a great time doing it, and the spelling was unbelievable. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Um, in fact, the winning, the final round, the winning word was spaghetti, <clears throat> and then. Oops. Right here, spaghetti and numerator. So nice to see a math word in there and get, and it was spelled correctly. Um, okay, so why the water bottle in front of you? Service learning, you've heard us present the importance of service learning before in our core curriculum. Um, <coughs> uh, the Win School, grade eight, 8B approximately 100 students, together with all five of their teachers, participated in a very important service learning project. I'm going to let them come in in September or in the fall and talk to you about the importance of this project. There's a pamphlet in your water bottle that describes the problem they are trying to solve. And the problem is there are way too many of these not being recycled properly, going back into the ocean, hurting animals, and so, so um, the team, let me just say, one young lady on the team wrote a letter to town manager Richard Montori and said, we're working on this project all year. We have, I'm not going to get delve too deep into the details, but through her letter writing back and forth with the town manager, the town manager has decided to kick off this initiative with the Wynn School. Every student at the Wynn will receive a sustainable, washable water bottle, and the next goal of this team will be to have the refillable water uh, stations. So more to come. I thought you should see how the town and the school are partnering to not only save our town, but hopefully save the world. I think that's a suggestion at future meetings. We should be seeing this instead of this. Well, I might be wrong, but that's, <laughs> that's what I believe is happening. All of our schools are quite interested in water bottle refilling stations as opposed to the old coolers. <coughs> Um, and I suggest that we start with the win, who's already now set the stage with the proper bottle for the students. Um, and then finally, to everyone watching and for the committee, just a reminder that summer reading lists and activities are on our website, and suggested grade level supply lists are posted to the website as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments by anybody on the Keith? Just a comment, Mr. Chair. Um, it's great that we mention our top 5% students. Maybe next year we can have those students in here prior to graduation. I think it uh, would be befitting to considering the work that they do for the four years, you know. And, that, and the timing just didn't work out properly. I understand. Right. I thought we should at least yep. sure. you know, announce them and recognize them. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, moving on. Is there anybody who wishes to take anything off the consent agenda this evening? No. Seeing none, does anybody like a, a motion to accept tonight's consent agenda? Make that motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion on the floor and seconded to accept tonight's consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair votes aye as well. <clears throat> Next up is the committee reports. And I will read that. And there is some, within this report, there is some tremendous news to every taxpayer in this <coughs> town, and I will get to that. I offer the following brief update since the last presentation on May 15th. The building committee has resumed bi-monthly meetings on the first and third Thursdays of the month, and will continue to hold project informational updates periodically at town boards and committees along with scheduling community informational forums. Since the new Tewksbury Elementary School building, school building project was approved at town meeting on May 6th, the building committee has completed and is underway with the, complete, with the completion of some of the following tasks. We've resumed our building committee meetings on the first and third Thursdays of the month. We've executed a project scope and budget agreement with the MSBA. We've started our coordination of meetings with the school department and town agencies. We are starting our contract negotiations for the rest of the project with the OPM and the designer. The selection and negotiations with a con construction manager is well underway. But this is the part that's tremendous news, and uh, the job that uh, Mr. Montori, our town manager, did to uh, come up with this solution is tremendous. On Tuesday, June 4th, Richard Montori, the town manager, reported that the $60 million 
dollar elementary school bond sale took place. Tewksbury received the true interest cost of 2.44% for the school with a bond premium of $5,873,851, which means the net amount borrowed was $54,435,000, of which $5,565,000 of the bond premium will be used to offset the cost of the project and the remainder will be used for borrowing costs. Therefore, based upon the bond sale with all town properties and percentages remaining, the same current FY19 at a split of 1.55 for the first year tax impact per average home of 400,000 is now estimated to be $352, almost $100 down per taxpayer of the original estimate of $445 for the residential values instead of the original estimate of 1.1 per thousand. That is tremendous news. And that is just a great job by our town manager and all the financial planners within the town. There's been a press release that's gone out to the newspapers. I'm doing a, uh, an interview with the, the Herald, the Lowell Sun, and the town crier tomorrow to make sure this information gets out to the public. I know it's been posted on some websites as well. But that's just a tremendous job by our uh, town manager. The project is now entering the design development <coughs> phase. During the design development phase, the project team works out detailed coordination issues while enhancing the project design and builds on the approved schematic design to reach a level of completeness that demonstrates the project can be built from all aspects of the design. The building committee, the OPM, designer, and soon to be construction manager will continue to provide updates and look ahead planning activities, deliverables, and milestone dates over the next several months as the overall project design progresses. Cost estimates are performed and schedules are produced. The building committee remains focused on its mission statement. The elementary school building project is being delivered by way of MGL Chapter 149A, Construction Manager at Risk. Construction Manager at Risk projects are sometimes fast-tracked so that the portions of the design that are completed early, such as site work, can, can be bid and built and items with the long lead times can be purchased while the rest of the design is being completed. The CM at risk firms assumes the role of general contractor on the construction work for the fast track package while continuing to provide construction management input on the design work that is underway. It is important to keep in mind that the role of the CM at risk firm on the CM at risk project is very different from the role of the owner's project manager who is hired to represent the owner in all project matters and to manage the project budget and schedule. We have gone into a long, lengthy process uh, receiving applications. Uh, there was a subcommittee of a search evaluation team that narrowed the field down to five firms. Those interviews were conducted uh, two weeks ago. And I am, I am pleased to say tonight that the elementary school building committee is going into negotiations with the construction firm of Consigli which is a tremendous firm and will be do a great job for the town. All the firms that we interviewed, all were, all were high-end, all top-notch self. So that's my report tonight. Unless, then, Jamie, you want to add anything? No, that was good. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Any update from the TEF? Um, I was going to share about our spelling bee, right. um, but you've heard that information, <laughs> so I will not repeat um, that information. We are looking to schedule a next upcoming <coughs> meeting, and I'm sure we'll have some information to share for the next school committee. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yes, the uh, CPAC would like to thank the 20-plus families that came out on the end of uh, May 28th to the Blue Wave Recreational Center. And I'd like to piggyback with uh, Superintendent Malone. Uh, spoke about where the CPAC is very excited to update that the Tewksbury and Wilmington CPAC, in conjunction, will be holding a, uh, hosting a day on the Hill courtesy of our state delegation. That's with Representative Dave Robinson, uh, Representative Wynn, and Senator Feingold. That is Thursday, June 27th. Um, if you are planning to go, please plan to arrive at 11.45 a.m. There's a 12 p.m. luncheon at Ash Ashburton Park. If it rains, uh, the confirmation room is 413. At 12.30, there's going to be a state house tour. At 1.30, there is going to be a meeting with legislators in room 222. And they uh, 
going to conclude the day at 245. Thank you. That's all I, that I have. I think it's going to be a tremendous day, uh, Mr. Sullivan. Anything from the wellness uh, committee? Yeah, actually, we did have a uh, one meeting. Um, so unfortunately, with the um, <clears throat> We do need to find a new chair. Ms. Walsh obviously retired. Um, just real quick, again, it was um, very few attendees um, being at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, we talked about Stop the Bleed workshops, which was a good success. Um, again, we need to find a new chair, a secretary. Um, still working through the mission statement there. Um, wellness educating is most effective when integrated through the school, reinforced at home, and supported by the community. Um, I did reach out, and um, there was a lot of work with some, uh, a lot of the freshmen um, in the, um, through the SAD program, and they had developed some really great posters, and I invited them to come here to present them, because they said that they were going to uh, be presenting them at, the, at a town meeting. I said this would be a great time to present them here as well. Um, so I'm waiting to hear back from them as well. Um, and I think that was about it. So like I said, there was a few, very few attendees at the meeting, so, so that was it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Stegman. <clears throat> yes. Moving along for policy, Mr. Demos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is the second and final reading of policy JF regarding school admissions. I move to approve this policy. Second. Okay, I have a motion on the floor and second to approve, to approve the policy JF school admissions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. I'll turn it over to you, Mrs. Regan, for under old business. Wonderful, and if you um, wouldn't mind, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to take item one and two together as one vote. Okay. Um, you can see the memo where I am recommending the purchase of math textbooks. I've updated you as of this afternoon, our uh, representative from Pearson sharpened his pencil even further. So I'm going to adjust the number that I am asking uh, for you to take a vote on. Let me just say I'm recommending the school committee to support the purchase and implementation of the new math resources Envision Math 2020 by Pearson for grades five through eight and Envision AGA by Pearson for grades nine through 12 for a six year contract in the amount of $162,000. The funding source is from the textbook capital outlay outlay fund. You can see that there are several supporting documents, specifically the summary page, which shows you that unanimously the Pearson Envision text was um, voted highest by all of our teachers as well as the um, math coaches and Jason Stamp uh, recommended it as well. And um, nationally, so we have our textbook rubric that we use, but nationally we use, for ELA and math recommendations, we use a website called edreports.org. And Envision also has, it's, it's in the green at every grade level, and that's about the highest recommendation you can receive. So we thought you should see that as well. So this um, purchase requires a roll call vote. Any discussion? Any questions? No. Okay, seeing none, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the two math series for $162,000 for grades 5 through 8 and 9 through 12. Have a second? I'll second. 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 Okay, I have a motion on the floor and second to approve the math, um, the math new books for, for six years for grades 5 through 8 and 9 through 12, 9 through 12 for the amount of $162,000. I'll take this as a roll call vote. Mr. Stadman? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Cullis? Aye. Mr. Demos? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Wonderful. Okay, Mr. Chairman. And then next um, in old business is my recommendation for the school committee to support the purchase and implementation of the new social studies and history resources. And we um, resist calling these texts just like in the math program because we'll have a class set of hard texts just like we will with the math, but these are online subscriptions. And um, this, the recommended 
new social studies resource is McGraw-Hill Connect Social Studies. And this, is, again, would be a six-year subscription for grades six through eight in the amount of $57,588.30. The funding source, again, is from our textbook capital outlay fund and attached is the supporting documents from our teachers that piloted the program. programs. Any questions? Motion to approve social studies series, grade six through eight, McGraw Hill for 57,588.30. Second. Second. I have a motion on the floor and a second to approve McGraw Hill Education Online Textbooks for a six year subscription for grades six through eight in the amount of $57,588.30. Again, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Stavin? Aye. Ms. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Cullis? Aye. Mrs. Demos? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up on the agenda is the 2019 superintendent's evaluation. So I will read now the 73 pages of documents. No, no, I <laughs> to Christopher Malone, superintendent of schools, from Dennis Francis, the chairperson of the Tewksbury School Committee, it's the annual summary evaluation. The date is June 12, 2019. The summative evaluation report for superintendent of schools is the responsibility of the chairperson of the Tewksbury Public Schools. The annual evaluation uses a format that was previously agreed upon by the superintendent and the Tewksbury School Committee. The superintendent has been evaluated using the Massachusetts model system for educator evaluations, specifically using the model super superintendent's rubrics. The performance areas under the evaluation include Standard 1, Instructional Leadership, Standard 2, Management and Operations, Standard 3, Family and Community Engagement, and Standard 4, Professional Culture. Mr. Malone, the three school committee members, Mr. Cutlass, Mr. Sullivan, and myself, who have worked with you over the past year, have evalu evaluated you on 20 different indicators within the four standards. The indicators range from unsatisfactory to exemplary. I am pleased to report that your overall valuation is one of proficiency. You have met and in some cases exceeded the school committee expectations. Each of my colleagues will have an opportunity if they wish to comment on the individual evaluations tonight. This evaluation provides you the opportunity to look back at your accomplishments and look forward to prioritizing our district's goals for the future. Mr. Malone continues to exhibit strong leadership by setting high standards and expectations for staff and students. He has ensured that the administrators are setting high expectations and providing strategic feedback for the staff. Staff are recognized for their dedication and performance on a regular basis. He continues to promote and provide educational support for staff with a continu continued addition of coordinators and coaches. The primary areas that continue to need improvement, such as STEM and ELA, continue to be a major focus by Mr. Malone. He continues to address more specific assess assessments for all student data. Overall, his leadership demonstrates that he is truly student focused. Mr. Malone extends himself in the hiring process by being involved in every aspect of, of that process. The school committee has all the confidence in Mr. Malone that the district's new hires are the best possible candidates for employment by the Tewksbury Public Schools. Under Mr. Malone's leadership, the first year of our new business manager was a seamless transition. In the areas of management and operations, Mr. Malone has been evaluated within the proficiency exemplary range. This past year in particular, Mr. Malone has spent an inordinate amount of time on the elementary school building project. Mr. Malone attended many community meetings, keeping the parents and residents informed on the project, especially the educational component, which directly led to the success at the ballot box and especially at town meeting. Mr. Malone has shifted the DLT structure to promote professional learning culture based on the quality feedback and supervision by continually providing the DLT with the resources and the professional development to prioritize continuous improvement on instruction. In the areas of family and community engagement, Mr. Malone continues to be highly visible and approachable in attending various events such as ESBC community meetings, PAC meetings, athletic events, music and art activities, to name a few. 
We encourage, as a committee, for Mr. Malone to continue these practices. Mr. Malone exemplifies professionalism on a daily basis and handles the most difficult of situations with sensitivity and diplomacy within our district involving students, staff, and family <coughs> issues. His professional demeanor and approach has been one of detailed analysis and consistency. In the areas of professional culture, Mr. Malone has implemented a strategy of challenging our administration, staff, students, parents, and community members to think differently and ask the question, why? Mr. Malone has created a professional culture to support the needs of the students with appropriate resources for teachers, leaders, and other staff members. <coughs> Mr. Malone is committed to the high standards of teaching for greater student achievement by bringing a culture of listening and not overreacting and constructively resolving conflicts, whether it be with staff or the parental community. As we look forward to the 21st century learning, we cannot stress enough the importance of the expectations of raising student achievement. The school committee believes that the essence of our district in these, achie in these achievements for our students and staff. In summary, the Tewksbury School Committee finds Mr. Malone to be dependable, conscientious, knowledgeable, and professional in fulfilling the numerous responsibilities associated with the leadership of our district. In closing, Mr. Malone, the Tewksbury School, School Committee believes that you represent the Tewksbury Public Schools exceptionally well in our community and are proud of your many accomplishments to date. We are looking forward to the future, knowing the best has yet to come. And on a note, the salary increase for Mr. Malone for 2019-2020 is 3.8%. Uh, so that's the formal uh, evaluation. Uh, but I also have to say that um, I've worked with you now for the past three years, and everything that I said there doesn't really even begin to say the, the great job that you do. And even to this date, one of the lessons that you've taught me over the last two weeks, and I think it's a lesson that we all could do, whether it be on the school committee administration uh, or staff member, is whenever we're asked the question, our first answer should never be no when we're asked the question. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to any of my uh, committee members who'd like to make a comment. Uh, I, I'd like to make a comment. Um, obviously, uh, as someone that uh, signed off on uh, a nice raise, I think you're doing a fantastic job. I think part of what uh, makes me have the respect that I have for you is you realize um, where we can get better. Um, I don't think you're a type of guy that and, and funny, in my evaluation, um, I didn't have any deficiencies, but there was areas where it wasn't because of you, it was physical plants, it's, you know, the elementary school. And I think the irony of it is in your professional career, um, where you are with those four buildings and the work that you did, which was, I think, extraordinary, as was noted um, in Dennis, Dennis's summation, um, I think you're really going to lay a solid foundation. I mean, I hope you stay forever, but uh, also I'm a pragmatic <laughs> person and realize <laughs> you're, you're going to max out here in a couple of years. But, um, um, you know, it, it was really important for me and I think for people that have young people in the district uh, to realize how important that elementary process was and not just because of the physical plant and the schools weren't designed to handle not just 21st century learning, but you know, special education needs and, and the changes and the advancements. And um, you know, to have someone like yourself to be able to say, you know, hey, we can say that in a clear and concise way that people get it and understand it, um, it is important. You know, for someone like myself, I sit up here on the board with these other members, and I understand the importance of it. Um, it, it's hard to translate that, and I think you did a fantastic job. Um, we both acknowledge that there's still, I don't want to say deficiencies, but there's challenges there that we're still going to deal with until 2022, and, and I think that's really, uh, that's really fantastic about how you are, and I think it speaks to the type of character you know, um, that you have to say, hey, you know, this isn't the best learning environment, but we're going to do the best we can you know, you've done even better to get a new building. Um, I hope you stay forever. And, uh, 
you know, you can see that pay off. And if not, maybe, you know, you come back 10, 12, 15 years from now and see how much better our uh, kids are doing in, in that much better learning environment with a consolidation of services and, and whatnot. So um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't, uh, if I didn't say that. And please keep up the good work. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cullis? Yeah, I'd just like to say, I want to echo everything my compatriot said here, too, <laughs> about uh, what you're doing, especially as Keith said with the school building committee. I mean, the town meeting, you did an outstanding job, and in every community forum, you really did articulate the needs well and great. And I think that went a lot way, a long way in convincing the community that we needed that building, and that's a lot of extra work for you that you have to do over these next few years, and you did a great job. I think you do a great job with the staff, with the teachers, and I think you're very professional in everything you do. And I know your focus is always on student achievement and getting the best we can for the town of Tewksbury. And, and the graduation, when I looked through the schools those kids were going to, it was out, outstanding. I mean, they were not that we always care about the Ivy League schools, but there were a number of them there, and there were schools across the country that the kids were going to. So I think you've really done a good job and a great job, and I know you're committed here, and I'm glad to see that. So thank you very much. If uh, this is, I know they did take part because they're new members. It's an opportunity for either one of our new members want to say anything. They can. I, I honestly, you know, Chris, Chris, you know, I'm, my my lack of voice, mm -hmm. trying to work through the, the duck voice. <laughs> um, you know, obviously we're we're still learning. You know, to, with one another. Um, you know, being new to the committee and things like that. Obviously, you know, you know, obviously the listening to the, the chair. Uh, you know they have great respect for you. I have great respect for you. You know you're you're, you know you're always listening to the. You know you put children first. You know you and the administration, um, obviously have great admiration for that. So I look, obviously look forward to working on your next. Um, you know your next, uh, your next uh, evaluation. So, thank you. And I as I look forward to it as well. I just. Um, I have a different lens to this, you know, being that I was on your hiring committee. Um, <laughs> so I feel as though I know you in a different capacity for a long time. So I can respect the character and the pride that you have in our town, and I appreciate that. Um, you're visible, which I think is important, and you're dedicated, um, which sometimes goes unnoticed. You know, you have long hours here, but you always have hours at home as well. And I think that, you know, um, there's a lot to be said about that, that when you're called upon, you answer, and that doesn't always happen. And so I may not have been part of this evaluation because of timing, but I do you know, look forward to being part of the team for a few years to come, and thank you for your dedication to Tewksbury. Thank you. Mr. Malone? Uh, just uh, thank you very much for this uh, evaluation. It helps me quite a bit. Uh, what I would certainly want to acknowledge is uh, person to my left, Ms. Regan, um, uh, Dave Libby, the business manager, all the principals, uh, who it is their dedication to this district that, that makes all this possible, not, not me. And the teachers of this district work so hard every day. Um, they, they at times can go unnoticed, and that is really the backbone of, of the district. But I'm also very appreciative of this committee for their vision of what this district can be and for uh, pushing me at times when I when I need to be pushed and I I actually enjoy the feedback conversations I can't think of a conversation that I've had with any of you that hasn't helped me learn and, and helped me think about an approach so uh, I enjoy that level of work. Um, I hope to serve you well and serve the community well in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to new business. Can we take the first two? Yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, in front of you, um, and again, maybe I can <coughs> take both of these in tandem. Mm -hmm. We have two proposals from our um, school travel committee, I think is how they, they um, what they call the student travel committee. Uh, both very affordable trips coming up in the next school year. From our very experienced teacher leader, Grassa Dudley, a trip to Montreal, Canada where the French students 
or any student can practice their uh, learned language. This trip is less than a thousand dollars per student so as I said very affordable and then <coughs> right behind it we see that uh, uh, again very um, experienced teachers who have traveled with students time and time again David Moffat and Bailey Mahoney the Spanish teacher are looking to bring some culture to our students and bring the high school students to New York to see Broadway show and uh, various activities and again that one is roughly $1,088. So two high school trips being presented tonight. Um, those teachers aren't here but uh, I think you know them well and you know the how well these companies they work with take care of our kiddos so hopefully we can approve these uh, trips for them. I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, it, it Good to see as much as I really love the international trips that our students go. I look at some of those costs of three to four thousand dollars. It's also good to see that we have trips that are more affordable. And they're short. And they're shorter mm -hmm. and they're more affordable for more people. And uh, I applaud the uh, two groups setting up these trips. And as I do with most of these trips, I'm looking forward to um, the summary of these trips when they come back. As I've done three or four times, I usually end up booking one of those trips myself, uh, my wife and myself. Really? So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And with that, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the TMHS International Club 2020 trip to Quebec, Montreal in May of 2020. Second. I have a motion on the floor and second to approve the international trip to Quebec. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We, aye. we. <laughs> Anybody opposed? The chair votes we as well. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the TMHS Fine and Performing Arts Department trip to New York City, 2020 April vacation. Second. I have a motion on the floor and second to uh, approve the TMHS Fine and Performing Arts trip to New York City. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? The chair votes aye as well. Moving on. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have the TMHS uh, Athletics Out of State Travel Request filed. <coughs> Some of these um, are pending. They depend on whether individuals and those individual sports qualify for them. So we try to have them kind of all out there in case people do. Many of those, particularly in the track and cross country realm, are, are actual parent travel. We, what we tend to do is reimburse the coaches for going. Um, some others that are um, we could take off at this point because they're in transition. One would be the football trip to Cushing Academy that is going to be in state at this time. Also, the boys soccer uh, team building to North Conway, New Hampshire, uh, that will not be occurring at that location. Um, the, all the way down to baseball, the Rhode Island and Connecticut scrimmage, that's happening, but that game happens to be taking place in state this year. And uh, finally, the tennis trip to Nashua, New Hampshire, will not, be, uh, will not be happening. So some of these others, particularly around the indoor track, the relay races, it depends if we have people that qualify for it at that time. That comes up in short notice, so we want to have the trip approved. Uh, most of these, if they're on our school buses with our coaches, they are the chaperones, they are the pieces. Otherwise, that would be parent, uh, actual parents taking them on the trip. But we would, it would be a, a sanction by the school committee because we're sending our coaches to represent our school district. But if there's any individual questions on any of those, I can be certainly happy to answer. Now, question now on the parents. Um, parents are quarried at that point? Parents wouldn't be courted if they're providing the travel and the student is staying with the parent in the hotel. If a parent was a chaperone with other students, uh, the requirement of court is what's their interaction with other students as opposed to their own child. So they would not be acting as a chaperone for other students. They'd be taking their own child. And likely going in their own vehicle. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Need a question? A, uh, oh, sorry, good. I have a question though, because we've got for our own Acori check, we've got volunteers <coughs> for status serve. Anyone that's a status serve is a chaperone that we, we mandate that all chaperones for overnight trips are quarried. Right. Right. However, in those say they are going with their parents for the overnight trip. Right, but once you're interacting with another student. What? I'm sorry, say that again? Once you're interacting with another, another student. 
They're also on their own time. That's not a structured field trip. But when they're on family time, they may be with their family interacting with <clears> another <throat> family. I know, but it's a student-sponsored event. You're asking us to. You're asking us to. You're asking us to um, approve a, a student, a school-sponsored event, which means that we have to go by our field trip and our. No, I just, what we're asking is to authorize students to be out of state. Correct. And once you're authorized us to go out of state, we have to go by our field trip rules. Um, this is a sporting event right, where yeah, parents would be taking their own children to out of state. What we're trying to account for is this, is anybody that may be leaving the state. <clears throat> no, I understand that. But it's a school-sponsored event. Not necessarily. An okay, so if it's a track not, meet may not be. If it's a not school-sponsored event, it shouldn't be on this agenda. Um, I think it's, it's, it's clarifying students who would be traveling out of state who would be representing Tewksbury Public Schools, whether that's as a part of a track team or as an individual who represents, who's on the Tewksbury Public no, I get, Schools No, my, my thing is just, I, the thing with Corey, I'm, I, I deal with Boy Scouts right. a lot, and that's why Corey is very sensitive to myself. Right. That's why I'm pressing the fact. And I went back to the whole, you know, Corey and you know, field trip and schools and things like that. And I just went basically back to the fact where we say, Corey checks, volunteers say, volunteers, chaperones a volunteer on an overnight trip. Doesn't say parent, doesn't say anything. Yeah, can, okay. I, yeah. can I just clarify, like, let's just look at the golf here. They're gonna go to New, a New Hampshire golf course. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're staying over. It's they're playing golf out of state. When they New leave Hampshire. the state, that's what we're so authorizing. What, what, right. what, what we're looking at here is no different than the wrestling. The state, Massachusetts State Tournament is going to be in Massachusetts. I wrestled. I didn't qualify. Right, for, but for let's the Wendy's, say, but. let's say they go to White Plains, <clears throat> 15 and the 16. They go to New York. It's an overnight trip to New York. Okay, so you're going overnight to New York. Once you go to New York, a parent is a chaperone. Well, that's a voluntary. We don't. They go we're not coach. telling parents they have. If parents choose, if a child, if a student chooses to go, they're going with their parents. That's an agreement between the parents and the decision to go. Coaches meet them there. They don't travel with them. We don't. That's not. So that's not a school. So that's not a school-sponsored event then. It is like for the hockey. Yeah, the hockey. I, I, so we can't. As far as you're getting into the term sponsor, <coughs> so, I'm, not, I'm not sure what your, your piece is I, I, on that. Many of these events that involve sporting activities are a reflection of individual students qualifying for individual. No, I, no, I understand. When, when I looked at our, our Massachusetts school committee rules, field trip is anything that is school sponsored. I think, the, I, th I think the answer to what you're asking is yes, if a, if a parent is going to take someone else's child along with theirs, then of course, now they're in charge of that child and that right. would be a chaperone. But otherwise, these are student athletes attending an out-of-state event because that's where it's being held. Correct. And when they go with their parent, well, the, we don't have to quarry the parent to be with their own child. But if, yeah, but if as they soon were with other we're children, not would. We're not paying for any of that mm -hmm. unless we're paying for a registration fee at a track meet. We're not paying for the travel. Right. We're not. And what, about if, what about if someone gets hurt in New York? That's a choice that the parent is taking them to, to travel to New York. So if it, they get hurt I, during I'm, the meeting. I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm just, I'm just asking, like, God forbid, someone gets, there's a car accident on, on I-90. Right. And are we held responsible for that? It would be the same situation if someone got on the way home from school on a given day, they got in a car accident. With or riding with their parents. Right. Or on the way home from any track meet or any golf. Um, if they were with their parents. Right. If they're on a school right. bus. So, that, that, that's, so that's, my, that's my question. So why are we, so you're saying it's not a school sponsored event then? I'm just giving you the details. I'm no, not but that's, a sponsored or but not. No, but that's what I'm saying because if it's a school sponsored event, we have to follow the rules of Massachusetts school committee field trips. So if it's a school-sponsored event, like, you basically have to, you're taking out your... What's your definition of a school-sponsored event? Well, it, it's anything. Like, <coughs> if you're saying EF, like, I'm going go to I'm gonna go to Paris, Rome, Quebec, right? You just, you just authorized going to New York or Quebec in 2020. 
So we just said, sure, we'll send the kids to Quebec, right? Go send Johnny, go send Jimmy to Quebec, and you're good to go. With adult chaperones who are not and their parents. Adult chaperones that are gonna get quarried and they're all yes, fine. Exactly. Well, it's done all through a separate company. All those contracts are done through a separate company. No <clears throat> right, but it also says that, um, you know, parents are, they're recommended for, and then once a parent signs up, they're quarried and they're good to go. I, I do believe all we're trying to do tonight, tonight is we are just authorizing that, that potentially these groups could have an out-of-state travel. Request. I know, but I'm just trying to define, again, I'm not trying to dig this rat hole, but it's just, I just don't want some kid getting caught off guard. And I just see it right now, we're being very proactive in the Boy Scouts and our troop is getting this really nice thing, who, they're quarrying everyone up and down the entire troop. So if my kid, my son steps into your car, there's no worry about it. it there, you also have to be too deep with other kids and things like that. And there's no issues. I don't, I, Mr. Chairman, why yes. can't we have this discussion offline later on in another time? Right, I mean, if we want to bring this... There's not enough detail here for us to understand <coughs> what we're talking about. So we're using terms out of context, maybe. So maybe we could have... Can we push this to the next meeting? Sure, and maybe we could have a longer discussion okay. about it at that time. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. So, but we can right. still, yeah, yeah, yeah that's we fine. We can still talk about it, and we can have more. Talk about, have more discussion yeah. at the next meeting. I, I, but I still think, Mr. Malone, correct me if I'm wrong, we still need to authorize the out-of-state trip. No trip. trips can go out of state unless it's right. the out-of-state portion that. Right, that, so that's what yeah, we but our next. These are all different levels <clears throat> that all have different other pieces to them, which one team may be on a bus with the coach, which goes under one requirement, unless a person may be an individual student with a parent who may or may not even have a coach meet them there who's traveling in their own car. Okay. I don't think we, we do see anything that's yes, coming up prior so, to the next meeting. So we could table this till, till the next meeting. I need a, uh, to table this, I need a uh, motion, to table, a motion this to, to table this to the next meeting. We have a second? Second. I have a motion on the floor and a second to table the uh, out-of-state travel request. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Chair of his eye as well. Brenda? Okay, and then as I um, have already alerted parents and students, the suggested supply lists are out nice and early and posted to the website, and that is what we see in front of us right now. I don't think, I don't think it requires a vote, it's just nope. information. Well, and just, uh, Mr. Chairman, also there is a um, memo in regard to non-union personnel and their uh, salary increase for the 2019-2020. Uh, I believe that total number of personnel, as soon as I can find it, I believe it's 38. <coughs> 38. 38. Uh, those are all our non-union personnel that would be abiding by the same level of pay raise that uh, most of our other union bodies. And the total cost for this group is $62,502? Correct. Thank you. Do, uh, any discussion? Can I just ask what a non-union personnel is? Sure. Um, we have uh, technically seven different union bodies within the district. These are people that would not fall under that. They might be certain secretaries, other positions predominantly at central office. We have some behavior specialists, other things like that that don't fall They're into, the they don't fall into any of the other unions. Okay. <clears throat> so they're technically on what we would consider individual contracts or employees at will. Okay. However, uh, a few years back, the school committee approved their ability to somewhat organize and uh, minimally address some issues they may have as a group. And certainly what we've done is had them in a group and address them as far as annual pay raises as, as an entity. Okay. But it's a wide variety of positions that don't fall into it, any it is particular not under those umbrellas. Correct. Thank you for clarifying. Are they confidential and or managerial and or both, Chris? I'm trying to think if anything wouldn't find under that, and I can't think of anything in that that wouldn't fall into that. So they're mostly those. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, do I have a motion? 
So I'll make a motion to approve the FI20 salary adjustment for non-union personnel. Second. I have a motion and a second on the floor to approval of the adjustment for the base salary for the 38 non-union members of the Tewksbury Public Schools. They need a roll call vote for this, Mr. Stabman? Aye. Mr. Sullivan? Aye. Mr. Cullis? Aye. Mr. Demos? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. That's a unanimous vote. Moving on, Mr. Long. Um, just the uh, appointment from Valley Collaborative. I've served on there for the past uh, three years. Uh, certainly we've worked closely with Valley Collaborative, worked with our special education students, program development, and many other pieces, and uh, looking for the uh, committee to appoint uh, myself on the board again for the following year. Yes, I think, I, I think this will probably, I'm just saying, my gut feeling tells me this is going to be a unanimous vote. <laughs> uh, but uh, I have a motion on the floor. I'd like to make a motion to approve Superintendent Malone as our Valley Collaborative Board member for FY20. Second that. I have a motion on the floor and second to approve Mr. Malone as our Valley Collaborative Board, board member. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Seeing none, the chair votes aye as well. Next up is the school committee matters of interest. I'm going to start with you, Mrs. Demo. Um, well, this evening I was just going to share um, that I attended many events this last couple weeks. I was in Charlton for the school committee training and as well as the one that they came to hear for us. And I found it very beneficial and appreciative that Tewksbury allowed me to attend. Um, I was very impressed with staff and students, um, and faculty, everyone that was involved with the awards night, the graduation. I volunteered at the all night long celebration and <clears throat> I, I just kudos to all those parent volunteers that take the time to put that together every year and everyone that comes together and actually makes that a well oiled machine. It's great knowing that those students have a place to go to at the graduation to socialize with their friends, but it to be in a safe um, environment, and it's much appreciated. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Cutlass. All set, Mr. Chair. Mr. Stabman? Uh, just real quick, just the TMHS Theater, June 22nd, uh, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. is the yard sale, and that's all I got. Mr. Sullivan? Congratulations <laughs> to all our uh, graduates, uh, July 3rd. Uh, the uh, Patriotic Committee is having the fireworks and events down at the uh, Livingston. And I'd be remiss reminding people that with both boys and girls playing in the Hockey State Final uh, this year, we're a hockey town. So, <laughs> go Bruins! <laughs> All I have. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Most of everything I want to talk about graduation has already been talked about. But I, uh, I have to tell you, I attended the uh, uh, flag day ceremony at the uh, Heathbrook School and it was in all the years I've been on the committee and I, I let the uh, Heathbrook know this it was one of the best performances I've ever seen every single child that was uh, in that in that school took part in one of the readings or the singing it was just a, a tremendous event and the turnout by the parents for the performance that I was there the cars were three quarters of the way up uh, Shawsheen Street uh, so it was just a great event and uh, well orchestrated. And uh, with that, that's all I have. Does anybody have any future agenda items? Could I just ask that we be sent some uh, information regarding the uh, prior to the meeting, field trips, and you know, um, what, what we were discussing in state, out of state, and how that differentiates whether it's a coach has taken it or a parent. So prior to us having that vote uh, next meeting, we have the information prior. So that would be very helpful for uh, myself and I know all our committee members. So. Thank Plus, you. we always is actually have uh, our athletic director present that could answer any, Great. any questions. That would be good to you. Yeah. Great. Good point, Thank Mrs. Sullivan. Yeah. Now, others, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn and go watch the game? Motion yes. to adjourn. <laughs> I get motion it. on the floor and second to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>